let's now solve the following ODE. And we're doing that not only to give you more practice with Laplace transforms, but also to show you that we can use Laplace transforms to even solve inhomogeneous ODE. So the equation here is y double prime plus y is minus nine sine of two t with initial condition two and initial velocity 10. And just as before, the first step is to take the L. So Laplace transforms. Yeah. So in this case, we start with y double prime plus y equals minus nine sine of two t. 2t, and you take Laplace transforms. So L of that equals L of that. And then this just becomes L of y double prime plus L of y equals minus nine times Laplace transform of sine of 2t. So remember the formula Laplace transform of sine of at is I believe a over s squared plus a squared. So this becomes two over s squared plus four. And then what you wanna use is our Laplace miracles. So L of y double prime just becomes s squared L of y minus s y of zero minus y prime of zero plus l of y l of y equals minus 18 over s squared plus four and now let's plug everything in so s squared l of y L of y minus 2s minus 10 plus L of y is minus 18 over s squared plus 4. And once again, this becomes an equation for L of y. So what we end up getting is the following. So s squared plus one L of y equals, I can put everything on the other side, two S plus 10 minus 18 over S squared plus four. And once again, sanity check, what is S squared plus one? It's precisely the auxiliary equation. And by the way, some people may wonder, no, the right-hand side, you don't have to put on a common denominator. You will see it'll make a couple of things easier. And then what we end up getting, L of y is 2s plus 10 over s squared plus 1 minus 18 over s squared plus 1 times s squared plus 4. And remember, what is the goal? The goal is to write this as a hidden Laplace transform. And in order to do that, we need to do partial fractions. The good news is this term 2s plus 10, it's already in partial fractions form. So it's already in partial fractions. Fraction form. So really, we have to deal with this term, All right? So let's do this, step two. Let's partially fractate this. So partial fractions. You will see it's kind of neat and messy at the same time. So let's look at minus 18 over s squared plus one 
times S squared plus four. So you wanna split this up as S squared plus one and then S squared plus four. You just have to be careful. So S squared plus one is degree two. So you have to guess something of degree one. So one degree lower, which becomes AS plus B and then CS plus D. So you have quadratic at the bottom and linear at the top. And now let's put everything on a common denominator. So AS plus B times S squared plus four plus CS plus D times S squared plus one over S squared plus one times S squared plus four. Now this is a foiling party and you're all invited to it. Bring your plus C's, get it? So you foil this out. So AS cubed plus four AS plus BS squared plus four B plus CS cubed plus CS plus DS squared plus D over this whole denominator, which we don't need. And then you put all the terms of the same power together. So A plus C, S cubed, I believe, plus B plus D. S squared, and then plus 4A plus C, S, and then plus 4B plus D over this whole thing. And what you want this to be equal to, the numerator is just minus 18, if you look here. So, 18, what is that? That's 0s cubed plus 0s squared plus 0s and then minus 18 over this whole thing. And all we have to do is just compare all the powers. And what we get is a system of four equations with four unknowns. So A plus C is zero. See, B plus D plus D is zero. For A plus C, plus C is zero. And for B plus D, is minus 18. Now, that's where it was complicated. Now it gets a little bit easier because what do we have? C is minus A, D is minus B, and that becomes now 4A plus C. So 4A plus minus A is zero. And then for D, for B plus minus D, for B plus minus B is minus 18. 18, and well, this gives you 3A is zero. So A is zero. And then this gives you 3B is minus 18. So B. I believe is minus six. And then C is minus A. So it's minus zero, which is zero. And then D is minus minus six, which is six. So let, let me just write this down a bit more neatly. So A was zero, B was minus six, C was zero. And then D was six. And therefore, what do we end up getting? So minus 18 over S squared plus one times S squared plus four. That is again, AS plus B 
So 0s minus 6 over s squared plus 1, and then plus cs plus d, so 0, 6, s plus 6 over s squared plus 4, and that simplifies to minus 6 times s squared plus 1 plus 6 over s squared plus 4. And now we are finally ready to conclude. So what is our answer? So where were we? So the Laplace transform of Y, remember that was, I believe, uh, that was 2S plus 10 over S squared plus 1 minus 18 over S squared plus 1 times S squared plus 4. Now, this 2s plus 10, you can just write this as 2 times s. Let me, let me split it up like that. 2s over s squared plus 1 plus 10 over s squared plus 1. And then this minus 18 business, we wrote this as minus 6 over s squared plus 1 plus 6 over s squared plus 4. And notice we can simplify this a little bit. So this becomes 2s over well, 2s over s squared plus 1 plus 4 over s squared plus 1 plus 6 over s squared plus 4. And well, this smells a lot like cosine. And in fact, notice that's 2s over s squared plus 1 plus 4 times 1 over s squared plus 1. And then remember, for sine, there's this extra factor of 2. So you write this as 3 times 2 over s squared plus 4. And then you use your formulas. So s over s squared plus 1 becomes Laplace transform of cosine t and then four Laplace transform sine of t and that's three times Laplace transform of sine of two t. So I just use the fact that Laplace transform of cosine a t is s over s squared plus a squared and Laplace transform of sine of a t is a over s squared plus a squared. And well, what we then end up getting is we had Laplace transform of y, that is Laplace transform of two cosine t plus four sine t plus three sine of t and once again, by comparison, what is y? It is cosine, sorry, y is 2 cosine t plus 4 sine t plus 3 sine of t. But if you want, you can also check if the initial conditions here are satisfied, which I believe they are. And once again, this is not to torture you. This will be very important in the next couple of lectures where we try to solve ODEs where the right-hand side is fancier than just some function. But also this is very nice, I think, because it directly uses the initial conditions and it is a direct method. You literally go from the ODE to your solution. Why? Unlike you know, undetermined coefficients or bar of power.